Welcome to the MT Predictor weekly market update uh, for August uh, 28th. I've got the uh, Dow mini uh, contract on the daily chart here. We've been again tracking this as we do every week. And uh, again, we had our major three wave pattern down here. Uh, we had our short signal back on uh, July 22nd that we were potentially going wave three down. This is your target here for that uh, particular trade. We did go wave three down here. I put in the uh, wave four resistance area now. The market has come into. It's come in. We've got a little wave B potentially moving into wave C. We can project up that wave C target now. with three clicks. Here's my minimum and typical wave C resistance areas now in the in the bigger wave four area. Uh, so that uh, level will begin uh, resistance around 11,515 and the typical wave C around 11,007, well just just above uh, about 11,715 we'll call it. Uh, is the uh, b beginnings of that uh, next resistance area. So uh, we'll see uh, how this market progresses, but once we get back into this wave four area, if we do, if they are able to get at least in the minimum wave C, then uh, we'll start, uh, well actually we can project our our wave five uh, down. In fact, let's just do that now. Okay, here's our minimum wave five down and typical wave five down. And this uh, area, uh, let's see, starts to support, comes in right around uh, 10,380. All right, so that would be the downside target initially. We'll also take a decision point. This is the next, another major support area where the market will need to make a decision if we get back down here and uh, that will be just below our minimum wave five down and that sits right around twelve uh... ten thousand two sixty area so those are your resistance and your support areas uh... or targets uh, for the next moves now some interesting things uh... obviously we had this jackson hole meeting that the the uh... fed presided over uh... He talked about that uh... in september uh, their FOMC meeting in September was going to be a two-day meeting and uh, maybe speculation of uh, discussing further quantitative easing or other plans and so we may get this kind of uh, buy on the rumor heading into that September FOMC meeting sell on the news uh, type of uh, situation happening we'll see um, the mar uh, the market may like the idea of additional stimulus, but ultimately I think it is uh, a negative uh, overall for the uh, market because it's showing that the Fed is is pretty desperate. The uh, uh, of course the QE one and two that we've had, but the Fed has also said subsequent to the QE two that we will have uh, artificially low interest rates for another two years. Uh, and that coupled with additional potentially, uh, if they do uh, come up with that at the next FOMC meeting, additional stimulus, whatever form that might take, uh, I think it's just going to be a more of a positive for uh, gold and silver. Um, and uh, a negative for the market doesn't mean that the market like I said we may get this buy on the rumor and sell on the news kind of thing we'll see something to keep uh, our eyes open to or open for uh, let's just take a peek at the S&P uh, this is the mini contract again we had our major decision point sell signal on a five wave pattern up you can see the nice clean clear five wave pattern up into our minimum uh, wave five resistance area our decision point sell signal on the red sellers bar telling us the sellers were overcoming the buyers here 
and we did uh, move down into a new wave one up into wave two and then went wave three down and we can project now of course our up wave four which I think I did last week so you know the the numbers of the area that we've come into again and it may unfold you know we did come into that area and we got a sell-off and then uh, market uh, bid up last week our STF here our strong trend filter showing strength for more potential downside here on the weekly chart so we may get you know some type of ABC pattern again in this wave four similar to the daily Dow and then another rollover uh, into wave five I'll just put the DP for the sake of time uh, actually it's, it's going to be right around 1040 I think uh, on that we'll look at that next week um, so that's the weekly S&P uh, so some nice warnings uh, or you know actual trade setups uh, on the MT predictor software there letting us know that uh, we had five waves up it was time for the market to at least to correct back to the wave four DP now the interesting thing is they took the wave four DP this area support area out and uh, when that happens the market typically likes to retrace the whole five wave move up and wipes it out and the the next decision point support or target for that would be this uh, this area here right around 960 in the S&P uh, mini contract anyway so since they took out the wave four DP support the next major DP is going to be this 960 area basically wiping out this whole five wave pattern up so we'll, again we'll see how that plays out um, uh, again let's take a look at the well, let's take a look at Goldman Sachs put some additional uh, levels on here you see we have now gone three wave uh, major three wave pattern down here here's the wave four resistance if Goldman does uh, get a bounce especially maybe into this FOMC meeting uh, should find some resistance in this area that'll start uh, just below 128 uh, I think we closed Friday 111.75 there and then uh, we did come into s the next kind of level of DP support remember we took this DP level out the support level out and I said once they broke that um, then it was uh, a bad sign and uh, they've since come into the next DP support uh, the next one below that is going to be at the extended wave three right around that area around uh, 96 87 96 90 just below 100 100 in and of itself should be uh, some natural kind of support resistance uh, support in this case uh, for Goldman but we'll see if that uh, gets a bounce uh, the BKX the banking index again took out our little uh, support area here on a close below that level they took that low out and uh, went uh, this kind of minor five wave pattern down here so we may get a retracement uh, some uh, actually we did get a bit last week and we'll see what they do uh, this week you see the next major support here where this decision point is right around uh, 3130 in the uh, BKX below that the next weekly major weekly uh, is way down there around uh, 1270 all right and let's move on and take a look at well, let's look at gold so we've been following this one so we had our major three waves up we came into the wave four support uh, we got a bounce um, uh, Thursday and Friday last week we had this blue buyers bar um, into uh, wave four support uh, telling us that buyers were overcoming sellers here got a nice move up there on Friday uh, we could revisit this this uh, wave four area if we get kind of an ABC uh, type of uh, pattern there 
STF was strong, so we did get that kind of extra leg up there into into the typical wave three. Uh, some strength coming off there, still into the strength band, but but the oscillator coming pulling back some. So we'll see if we get any separation there, or if it stays strong. If so, we may just go right into a wave five. So let's just let's just take the DP off here, and this is this will coincide with the. Uh, Wave five up as well, so just below nine fi uh, 1950. Uh, 1943 in change will be your next major resistance in gold. And so let's just take a look at silver. So we did in silver have an actual uh, uh, trade set up there. And a target down around 36 dollars now if you're actually trading this we hit the hundred percent initial risk line here so uh, best to have your stop at uh, 42 uh, at least around your entry um, probably around 42.40 anyway and uh, as uh, protection and we'll see how this plays out. We're in this major wave uh, 2 or B resistance area. At the same time, we came into this kind of minor DP resistance. Uh, but if this area gets taken out, then like, like we talked about before, we'd see new highs in silver uh, probably coming into the DP resistance right around $52. But if they can't get through this, chances are we'll see this $36 uh, dollar area back down here. And uh, if they take that out, then uh, below that's going to be the uh, C, beginning of the uh, wave C support around 3170. Uh, let's see. Uh, oil here that you know continues to maybe get an ABC back into this uh, wave uh, B uh, resistance area and eventually maybe working its way down to the wave C. Uh, we'll see that's uh, kind of floating uh, around there at the moment. Same with the dollar here on the left. Uh, it's really just gone sideways but again this is going to break one way or the other and that will be a I think a major move one way or the other. And finally, I'm uh, just going to look at a couple of trades from uh, Friday's uh, S&P Mini. Uh, we had a decision point sell signal uh, here. Uh, the our strong trend filter, or the bigger trend, was was up. So not what we call a standard trade setup, but if we do a little additional analysis with the tools here, I'm going to choose that swing high, and the software points out that we had a five wave pattern uh, in process there and also our volume indicator here uh, showed us we had a, a high volume spike here telling us that as this market was moving higher that sellers were coming in and uh, i.e. professional sellers so it was a potential trade setup uh, that one of our advanced traders uh, might look at taking and we can set up the uh, risk reward on that and you can see that was uh, 2.8 to 1 again the software uh, it's all about risk control. Initially when you get into a trade you don't know if it's going to get to your target or if you're going to get stopped out. Only thing you can control initially is that initial risk. So on uh, in this particular account we could uh, short two contracts. We'd be risking $275 uh, with our stop above the swing high there. The target again it lets us know it's 2.8 2 to 1 so if we're going to risk $275, we can take out $763 at the target there. And you can see that one uh, played out right to the target. And after it did get to the target there, we did get a long signal that uh, anyone could play with the bigger trend here. And uh, this was, again, long two contracts risking $275 with a target of 4.6 to 1 uh, or $1,200. Now, the, uh, this one you would add exit at the close because the uh, 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 market closed before we got to the target there and we don't want to uh, 
be holding stuff overnight, especially uh, with what's going on overseas and, and news that comes out over the weekend. Got to be careful about holding stuff overnight anyway. Uh, and we can redraw the trade to, to see where we would end up uh, at the close there. So uh, another 2.3 to 1 again, so on a $275 risk, taking out $642. So this is how the software can help you trade, uh, keep your risk control um, and your risk profile consistent from trade to trade, You're not trading too big a position or too small a position, and your targets are always going to be bigger than your initial risk. So um, if you're not using that type of risk control in your trading, if you've got a lot of small wins and a few big losses, it's a very common uh, problem among new traders or any trader that's not successful. Then uh, sometimes just doing the opposite of what the crowd is doing will uh, put you uh, on the uh, uh, path to success. All right, hope that's helpful. And we'll uh, take a peek and look at uh, what sets up next week.